I went to a coin show yesterday and I couldn't find any Libertads, but I found something really cool. T. Hello, Silver fans. This is T, and you're in the place to be for silver education, acquisition, and entertainment. And hey, welcome back. Glad you're here. And uh, I've got a good video for you today. I think you're going to enjoy it, especially if you enjoy history. And uh, before we get to the uh, what I'm about to show you and start talking about a little bit of history, uh, just a quick friendly reminder to hit that like button. And if you're not already a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. And I certainly encourage you to comment on the video. And I'll tell you what, uh, just I thought I'd take today to uh, mention this kind of a public service announcement for all of us uh, YouTubers out there. Uh, those of us who are in the silver stacking community, when it comes to YouTube, we make up like the teeniest tiny little fraction of YouTubers out there. And uh, anytime you like, uh, subscribe, uh, comment, and uh, promote our videos and share them with your friends, uh, that really helps us out and helps get the word out about uh, the silver stacking lifestyle and movement. So, hey, thanks in advance for doing that. Uh, I want to show you something really cool. Like I mentioned earlier, I was looking for my normal uh, lineup of things that I typically look at when I go to a local uh, coin shop. Uh, and I, at the coin show... Um, you know, the prices were kind of on the high side. I was a little bit surprised. Uh, everybody was uh, really asking uh, pretty high-end prices. Uh, so I was very, very selective. And uh, what I came up with uh, after touring the entire room uh, was uh, this bar right here. Uh, I'm guessing that most of you have never seen a bar like this Ever. Uh, this happens to be, and it's, it is pretty heavy in the hand here. It's, uh, of course, a, a bar, a little art bar that weighs uh, 1.6 ounces. And uh, for those of you who are wondering, um, the guy uh, that I was dealing with and uh, who had it uh, for sale said, hey, um, melt is $42, to $42 today. Uh, how about 48? And, you know, in that case, I, I didn't really even squabble. I kind of, in the, my mind, uh, did the math. Um, that's about 30 bucks an ounce. And considering just any old generic uh, rounds or bars uh, were going for $32 an ounce at the uh, show. Yeah, that's that's what, that was like the standard price around the entire room as I was looking around. About $32 an ounce for generics was the price. So I got this for a little bit lower than uh, generic silver. And I think it's kind of cool. And uh, he, uh, the gentleman had several of these. Matter of fact, let me, so I don't have to hold this. Let me just uh, very gently show you the back of this. And uh, that the reason I say gently is because uh, the uh, paint, the enamel on these bars chips off very, very easily. As a matter of fact, he had other bars like this, and I, you know, I'm kind of kicking myself for not buying more already. He had other bars like this, but the uh, paint, uh, the enamel was uh, chipped off uh, to varying degrees on uh, each of the bars. They had different depictions. This one, whoa, almost dropped it. Reflejos de Zulia. So, plata, can you see that? Plata, 1,000. That's a mil. And so let me put this on this little thing right here. I'll just, got a box here. And I thought, I'd, rather than holding it with shaky hands while I talk, uh, let me see if I can position this here for you to enjoy while I'm uh, describing uh, what we've got here. And again, I'm uh, trying a couple different things. I have a second light here and uh, to my right. Yesterday, I tried a, a new light to my left, and now we've got uh, different lights shining. I'm hoping that you can see okay. And there is that bar for you to enjoy. Let's see how, check the lighting here. Okay, you guys let me know what you think. Uh, so uh, if you're wondering who is on that uh, bar, 
uh, that painted enamel bar. I was uh, wondering the same thing. So when I came home, I did a little bit of research. And uh, before I could even notice that uh, there's some little um, lettering down at the bottom here. Uh, right here and at the very bottom that is a depiction of Alonso de Ojeda who was a Spanish explorer and a very important person in the history of Venezuela and uh, you know all of the bars that I saw had uh, very different depictions of uh, the history of Venezuela uh, I just happened to pick the one that had uh, the best paint and uh, the, that looked the coolest to me so I think I, uh, I think I did okay. It looks pretty cool to me. But I wasn't able to find a whole lot on these bars when I was doing research. Uh, the guy I bought it from thought it was uh, from the 1980s. And a, um, someone in, on eBay is trying to sell a set of six of these bars for $875 for a set of six, which comes out to $145 per bar. So considering I paid 48 bucks a bar, $30 an ounce silver, uh, I think I did okay. I don't know. You guys tell me what you think in the comment section. Uh, but I don't have any interest in selling it. I think it's a cool looking little bar. And uh, you know I'm a stack collector. I stack and collect. This actually fell into both categories. So uh, as far as adding to my stack, it wasn't that expensive. And as far as a collection, this one is a neat one. Now let's talk a little bit about Venezuela. Uh, Venezuela, uh, first of all, uh, if uh, you don't remember your uh, eighth grade geography class, uh, Venezuela is at the very north end of the continent of South America. And uh, Venezuela is going through a major crisis right now. Uh, this poor country has been through hell. I'm telling you, uh, uh, since... Uh, the last, um, throughout the decades, uh, they've gone uh, from, uh, you know, uh, just a average uh, South American country to an absolutely uh, rich South American country as uh, oil was discovered in Venezuela. And they had a, a big boom time where uh, at one point in time uh, in the history of Venezuela, Venezuela was the one of the richest countries in the world. Uh, it was like top five. The economy was booming, the oil was flowing, and uh, you know they had a, a very good thing going for quite a while. Uh, and then uh, over throughout the decades, uh, and different scholars can tell you different reasons, but. Uh, as far as I could tell, things were kind of mismanaged. They put all their eggs in one basket. And when the price of oil plummeted, uh, their future plummeted and uh, went down and down and down. And uh, long story short, uh, Venezuela is now one of the poorest countries on the planet. I'm talking like 96% poverty rate for a country of uh, well-educated um hard-working people, uh, their government has failed them. Uh, some of you uh, may remember Hugo Chavez. Uh, Hugo Chavez was uh, the uh, president for a while who came, rose to power as a dictator, uh, ruled that country with an iron fist. He's the one that you probably remember. Uh, he went up to make a speech at the UN and he uh, was calling uh, President Bush, our president, the devil in front of the whole world. And so he even went so far as to say that the podium that he was standing uh, at smelled like sulfur because uh, President Bush had left it smelling like sulfur. And I kept referring to him over and over as the devil. And so uh, Hugo Chavez uh, passed away. He died. And uh, their inflation was uh, through the roof. And then a guy, uh, one of Hugo Chavez's boys uh, took over, Nicolas Maduro. Maduro, uh, he took over and inflation turned to hyperinflation. Uh, so um, there, this is a situation where everybody who could was trying their best to flee that country uh, people who were once, uh, you know, well-off, proud families uh, were uh, in uh, abject poverty, not enough to eat, 
no jobs. Their jobs that they did have, their, their, their money basically became nearly worthless. The purchasing power was just a fraction of uh, what it was previously. So uh, as I said earlier, you're talking 96% poverty. The only people that uh, you know are making it there that are not in poverty are the uh, folks who are the cronies of Nicolas Maduro and uh, the military leaders and uh, you know his close allies. Again, uh, the fiat currency is virtually worthless, and um, you know there's chaos and unrest and riots in the street, uh, people starving, and uh, just an absolute uh, shame that uh, human beings on this planet, uh, in that country, with uh, oil and other resources, are living that way. Uh, I happen to know someone who uh, is in a neighboring country of Colombia, and uh, you know the people were doing their absolute best to just get out of Venezuela and get themselves to Colombia where things were just more stable and where they can eke out a living and have enough food in their bellies. Uh, but even uh, that was uh, thwarted by uh, the government. And so just a real mess of a country. I feel so sorry for those people. Now, hey, uh, back to this bar, uh, it kind of makes me wonder, you know, just imagine who had this bar uh, prior to it making its way to T the Silver Stacker's hands in Crown Point, Indiana. Uh, and you know, who, you know, somebody bought this bar in the 80s. It was shiny and new, and all the paint was sticking on it, and it was uh, gorgeous. And who knows if they bought it uh, for uh, stacking purposes or just a, a neat hobby. Uh, but what did they trade it for? Uh, how was it used? Was it used to pay a, a, a coyote to get someone across the border? Was it used uh, for a family to buy enough beans and rice to uh, sustain them for a while? Was it used to, to make a bribe? Uh, this became uh, a valuable asset. When the uh, paper currency became virtually worthless, uh, this, I'm sure, was used to trade for something uh, that was of value. So um, just use your imagination. I certainly will. And uh, quite fascinating to think. Uh, that's why so many people in our country are worried about inflation and um, you know preparing by filling their safes with uh, silver and gold. And uh, all you have to do is look down to South America and the country of Venezuela to say, you know what? I get it. It could if it could happen there, who knows where else it could happen and to what degree. Uh, maybe it wouldn't happen in this country to that extreme. Uh, but then again, who knows? I'm sure those people who were living uh, good lives down there and educated and had a, uh, you know, good careers, uh, had no idea what they had in store for them uh, when uh, the country that they loved was uh, ripped apart uh, by uh, military leaders who uh, only wanted to serve their own purposes. So, uh, you know, what a situation down there. And, uh, you know, thanks to buying this little 1.6 ounce uh, bar that I got a pretty good deal on, uh, I learned a lot and I hope you did too. So, hey, hey, thanks for watching. I always appreciate uh, everyone watching these videos and spending a little time with me, uh, letting me show off my silver, and in some cases, like today, talking a little bit of history and politics. And uh, I certainly encourage you, uh, if you've gotten to this point in the video, if you haven't done so already, uh, this little circle right here, my logo, uh, if you hit that, you'll uh, be a new subscriber. And if you want to watch more of my videos, just click here. All right, everybody. Have a great one. Toot.